When the Georgia Tech basketball team opened preseason practice in October, they were not burdened with lofty expectations. The Yellow Jackets were picked to finish seventh in the ACC, and no one even dared utter the words, Final Four. But they had a potent nucleus in the backcourt. Together, senior Marvin Lewis, junior B.J. Elder, and sophomore Jarrett Jack combined to score nearly 37 points a game during the 2002-2003 season. Providing quality depth at the guard position would be Arizona transfer Will Bynum, sophomore Jim Neistrom, senior walk-on David Nelson, and freshman Keith Jones and Mario West. However, questions surrounded what appeared to be a depleted front court. Last year's ACC Rookie of the Year, Chris Bosch, was the fourth pick in the NBA draft. The previous season's Rookie of the Year, Ed Nelson, transferred. Who would step forward and fill the void? The candidates included seniors Clarence Moore and Robert Brooks, juniors Ismail Muhammad and Anthony McHenry, and seven-foot-one Australian Luke Shenshin, along with a talented sophomore, Yotas Tarver. With those names on his roster, Coach Paul Hewitt had reason to be optimistic as he convened preseason practice. Very deep, talented, and versatile basketball team. A team that can guard multiple positions. A young man like Anthony Henry can guard the point guard all the way to the center. A young man like Jarrett Jack obviously can guard the point guard and can even guard the power forward. But injury scratched Tarver from the list just two weeks into preseason. A dislocated kneecap would keep him out of the lineup for two months and limit his effectiveness until mid-season. The news was tough for the team to take, but together they would persevere. They would find answers. They would work hard to establish a familial bond to fortify their competitive spirit. When it happened, you know, it, it, was a, it was a tough blow. It was a really tough blow, but it's interesting. You, know, you always hear the, you know, people always talk about out of adversity, some good things can happen. And uh, this team really grew out of that adversity. Uh, I remember going up in the locker room after the, uh, after the injury occurred in practice. Um, I stopped practice, we went upstairs and we were going to break practice. And uh, Mo gathered everybody and said, Coach, we need to say a, a prayer. And uh, he said the prayer and then when we broke the huddle, that was the first time, you know, he asked, he said, look, instead of saying together, coach, can we just say family? From that point on, every time we broke a huddle for the rest of the season, we said family, just to remind each other that we got to be there for each other. And I know I can hear Coach Warren in the back of my mind before we go out every, uh, every game, he'd always tell the guys, you know, play like a family, act like a family out there on the court. Just don't say it, act like a family, play like a family. And uh, that's what this team did. The Yellow Jacket family embarked on their journey together in mid-November with NIT preseason games against Louisiana Lafayette and Hofstra, followed by a game at Cornell. As expected, Tech was dominant and outscored its opponents by an average of 25 points a game. Jackets on the run. Jarrett beats Brooks, dunk. On November 26th, the Jackets traveled to Madison Square Garden in New York for the semifinals of the preseason NIT. Ironically, the team was matched up against the team it would meet in the national championship game four months later, top-ranked Connecticut. UConn scored the first six points of the game, but Tech answered the challenge. Here's Lewis at the left. Oh my goodness, Gordon fell down. Feed Schentzer for the dunk. Here's Okafor turning against Jensen. Back inside, right hand, missed it. Bodies go down. Okafor, Anderson, Muhammad, a dunk at the other end. Oh, it.
The Jackets went into the locker room at halftime with a 42-35 lead, and that was as close as it would get. In the second half, Tech swarmed the stunned Huskies and went on a scoring rampage. Loose ball, here's Jack, pitching ahead. Muhammad's got it, he'll take it down and dunk it home! Down low, here's Moore, squaring against Okafor. Up top, Lewis, face the three, slides in, two-pointer, hanging jumper. Good, Marvin Lewis on the board. Looking for the big fella inside, now Poole, tried to go to Okafor, knocked away, scramble for the loose ball, Tony McHenry's got it. Face it to Jack, Tech looking to run, lead, Moore, layup, got it, oh, what a good pass. Lewis out of the double team to Jarrett with seven to shoot. Back door, seven for Clarence Moore. Moore's dunk finished the Huskies off as the Yellow Jackets knocked off number one with a convincing 77 to 61 victory. I was very happy that our players had a chance to play on a stage like Madison Spill Garden against the number one team in the country and proved to everybody that we were going to have an outstanding team this year. Georgia Tech would play Texas Tech for the NIT championship. The Red Raiders of coach Bob Knight were ranked 25th in the nation. But after disposing of UConn by 16 points just two days earlier, the Yellow Jackets would not be intimidated. Here's Jarrett, left wing Lewis, catch and shoot three, got it. Elder, short jumper right of the lane is good. Georgia Tech got that one easily in transition against the Red Raiders. Coming out of there with it, and he kicked it away. It's loose. Ishmael turns it around. A corkscrew and a hammer. Under seven to play, Jarrett Jack, a three ball from the left side is good. Seven three-pointer of the year for Jarrett Jack. Back out front for Jack. Left side, here's Muhammad. Ish on the drive, slips it to Elder, steps behind the line, three ball away, and good. Elder's three up the Jackets' lead to 16, and the team took a commanding 43-28 lead at halftime. After the break, the onslaught continued, as the lead eventually ballooned to 28 points. Muhammad working out front on the left side, crosses it to Jack, three ball from there, got it. Wow, Jared Jack, 15 points. 15.40 to play here at Madison Square Garden. That ball taken away. Lewis, Allen with Ishmael Muhammad going down, and he'll bang it down. The Garden to its feet as Ish sets down his sixth field goal. He's got 14. When it was over, the Yellow Jackets had six players in double figures and shot over 55% for the game. Tech celebrated its 85 to 65 win over the Red Raiders and proudly accepted the preseason NIT championship trophy. When we won that, everybody just kind of felt that, hey, you know, we're, we're a real good team. And, you know, we, we kind of thought that before that we had something to prove. We thought, that, you know, we had a chance to be ranked in the nation, even throughout the year. But, you know, I, I think after that tournament, everybody just kind of felt that, hey, you know, this is our time. You know, we can do something special here. Suddenly, the country was beginning to take notice. Tech now owned a 5-0 record, including a dominant victory over top-ranked Connecticut. Next up, the ACC Big Ten Challenge game at Ohio State. Once again, the Yellow Jackets established their authority right out of the gate. Here's Muhammad, right corner elder, a three on Sylvester is good. Down low, Schentzer, up top for Adinovich, layup good. Luke just forced it up with a left hand off the window and in. Henry left alone 17 feet, buries it all alone. Marvin, couple of dribbles, head of the circle for Muhammad against Stockman. Ish around Stockman, to the goal for the dunk. Stockman couldn't have slowed him down with a rope. Although Muhammad ended the half with a jam, the Yellow Jackets' five three pointers were the story in their 11 point lead. Here's Moore at the left side, hands to Elder. BJ three ball is good. <laughs> 
The closest the Buckeyes would get in the second half was eight. But the Yellow Jackets stayed in control with a steady supply of jumpers, a couple of threes, three ball more right of the circle, line drive is good. And for emphasis, a dunk or two. And Jack will set it down. Two hand slam from Jared Jack. It all added up to an impressive 73 to 53 triumph for Tech and its sixth consecutive victory of the young season. The year 2003 concluded with six more games in December and six more dominant victories for the Ramblin' Wreck from Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah. Before the Yellow Jackets would begin conference play, they would bring their 12-0 record to Athens for a clash with arch-rival Georgia. The Bulldogs played aggressively right from the start and sprinted to a nine-point lead just over 10 minutes into the first half. But the Yellow Jackets regained their composure and went on an 11-2 run of their own to tie the score at 26. Great position down low, and B.J. Elder turns around and scores his first field goal. Clarence Moore drive and dunk. Weehunt tried to draw the charge. Nothing doing with this crew. The half ended with Georgia leading 36-32. After a respite to regroup, the battle for bragging rights ensued. Bounce pass to Hayes. Holds it high against Schenzer. He's got two fouls. Daniels driving and Daniels scoring. Find him against right. Find him to the lane. Find him to Muhammad. Reverse layup underneath. Ball knocked away. Taken away by Tech. Jack on the fast break against Newman. No good. Follow up on Muhammad. Wright gets a step on Bynum to the basket. Missed it. Tip up and in by Chris Daniels. Daniels with the tip. And it is 68 to 68. And that's the way it remained. 68 68 at the buzzer. In overtime, the Dogs went ahead by three with 21 seconds left. Tech needed a three to tie. Jack spins to the lane. Lewis, a two-shot jumper, short. Rebound, Muhammad. Jack, a three to tie is good! 1.5 to go, and Georgia calls time. And so a second overtime would be needed to settle the score. But in the end, the Jackets suffered their first setback of the season. I remember coming back to practice and, and showing the edit, the film of that game, and them being angry, angry at themselves that they did not perform to the level uh, that they were capable of. And that was a good sign, as opposed to being content, getting out 12-0 and, and losing one. Uh, they were upset that they weren't 13-0. Eight days later, Tech would put that loss behind and open its conference portion of the schedule at North Carolina in the Smith Center. The Tar Heels scored the first nine points of the game and never looked back. Tech's four guards tried to keep their team in the game, scoring 64 of the team's 88 points, but it wasn't enough. The Tar Heels scored 103 points, and after winning their first 12 games of the season, the Yellow Jackets found themselves coping with back-to-back -back defeats. But Coach Hewitt was not alarmed. What I felt like was we got beat by a good basketball team, uh, I thought Carolina played an outstanding game, and I remember telling the reporters outside our locker room, even though they didn't believe me, I said, this team's going to be fine. I said, trust me when I tell you, this team's going to be fine. The opportunity to return to their winning ways came just four days later, at home against Virginia. The Cavaliers came out smoking, making seven of eight three-point attempts. But the Yellow Jackets kept pace 
and grab the lead with 12 and a half minutes left in the first half. Here's Muhammad, baseline, spinning, layup, good. The 0-1 dribble, got to get rid of it. Back to Jack, quickly left corner, Lewis, three ball from there, got it. Gets it to Muhammad against Kane. He gave up the baseline, there's the dunk. He wasn't able, no he wasn't, at all. They increased the lead to 19 points in the second half. Marvin Lewis and B.J. Elders combined 33 points set the pace as Tech cruised to a 75-57 win. Just two days later, Tech welcomed Maryland to Alexander Memorial Coliseum. Will Bynum took charge in this game, scoring a career-high 25 points and a season-best five three-pointers. Here's Jack, left corner, Bynum, three away. To Bynum, thought about the three against Strawberry. Shents are calling for it. Will throws a three up and gets it. Oh my! Oh my! Jared Jack contributed 17 points, and Luke Shenter came up big underneath with 15 points and 11 rebounds. The Terps wouldn't go down without a fight, but the Yellow Jackets pulled away in the last eight minutes of the game to win 81 to 71. Tech was now ranked 11th in the country and traveled to play at 10th ranked Wake Forest on January 20th. The three point shot was the difference in this game. The Jackets buried nine of 17 trades compared to just four of 15 for the Deacons. Paul Hewitt shouting instructions to his team. High post lob to Moore, back to bottom, three ball on Paul is good. Nice secondary break by Wake Forest. Muhammad to bottom, three on Levy. Marvin Lewis was a perfect four for four from long range, and Will Bynum hit three of five he launched. Still, Wake Forest persisted, and Tech would need another three to hold the Deacons at bay. Blue Jack back to Moore, three ball right of the circle is good. Clarence Moore's first point of the game. The Yellow Jackets had to make the free throws in the end to win, and they did. Eight for eight to be exact, and Tech escaped Winston-Salem with a 73-66 victory, snapping the Deacons' 24-game home court win streak. The win at Wade Forest, snapping that 25-game win streak, put different standards in our players' minds. Certainly beating number one is one thing, but when you go on the road and win in the ACC, you realize that you're at absolutely at a totally different level, and to win at Wake Forest with that 25-game win streak, and have such a good basketball team, it, it really, I think, it changed the stakes in our guys' minds that, hey, we can think big here. Four days later, and just a few miles down the road in Raleigh, the 15 and two Yellow Jackets tangled with North Carolina State. The Wolf Pack built an early lead and led by 10 at the break. The margin grew to 16 in the second half before Tech started its comeback. Shetzer flash, he breaks Atzor, damn, layup good! Allen to Lewis, he's got Shetzer ahead, here's Elder for three over Melvin, and it's good! Tech had cut the lead to two points with seven seconds left, and challenged the Wolfpack to win it at the free throw line. And they did. Clemson was next on the Yellow Jackets home court, and B.J. Elder was determined to send the Tigers home with their tails between their legs. Tony on the drive, Elder, three ball at the top, got it! in the baseline right to Schentzer. Head of the circle, Elder left open for three, got it. Front court, here's Elder, who's been red hot in the first half. Off the screen, Elder working around Akimbala. He'll sneak down the lane, scoop it up, and the foul. Vernon Hamilton then stripped by Elder. BJ racing the other way, it's one on four. Go to the rack, off the window and in. That is just sensational, and Clemson's got no answer. Elder finished the game with an ACC season-high 36 points to lead the Yellow Jackets over the Tigers, 76-69. Duke was next on January 31st, and Tech wasted little time attacking the Blue Devils. Three on four, Duhon in the lane, tried to kick it to Redick, and Muhammad's loose in the open floor, and he will bury it right-handed with a dunk. Jarrett waits on traffic to clear, and now forces the issue. He'll go all the way to the goal and lay it in. 
Moore. Faking Randolph, can't pull the trigger. Duke close, nicely on the baseline. Moe dribbles back, takes it hard on Williams off the glass and in. But the Blue Devils came roaring back and tied the game just four minutes later. Duhon works baseline all the way up and under. Nicely done by the senior Chris Duhon. But there was still plenty of basketball to play before halftime. Jarrett now resets the offense with 11 to shoot. He'll work on Williams for three. Got it. Great break now by Jack. And then the three ball from the top of the circle. Here's Ewing for three. Got it. Daniel Ewing is outstanding. Jack works off the screen. Ed Tarver. Jarrett will penetrate through for Bynum's three out of the left corner. Got it. Bynum with nine. His third three. Here's Luol Dang baseline. Spinning in traffic. Pushes up the ball away. Jumper got the roll. Tech's got to find a way to score here with down six, and we approach two minutes to play first half. Bynum will go to the goal around Shablik Randolph and score. 11 for Will Bynum off the Tech bench. 15 to shoot. Don Duhon on the drive. Pushed it up. Wouldn't go. Williams the rebound. Put it back up and got the roll. And that's the way the first half ended, with Duke leading by five. Although the Blue Devils led most of the second half, the Yellow Jackets were never out of striking distance. Here's Bynum, he'll cross over Ewing, go all the way to the goal. Beat Schentzer for the dunk. Bynum off the Schentzer screen to the head of the circle. He'll hand it to Jared Jack. Left side, Lewis, catch and shoot two. Got it. Schentzer coming to help out with a screen. Bynum works off that screen. Will takes it down the lane, dumps it back. Luke up strong, scores, and the foul his third. Despite a valiant effort, Duke prevailed 82 to 74, knowing they endured all they could handle. Just three days later, the Yellow Jackets ran into an ambush at Tallahassee, Florida. The Seminoles sprinted to a 16 to 5 lead, but Tech chipped away and actually led by two at the half. Line through traffic, scooped it up, and the darn thing went in. Oh, sensational athletic move by Muhammad for the field goal. Will with 14 to shoot, gets it to Jack. Back to Bynum, fakes the three. Down to B.J., deep three on Wilson. Got it. B.J. Elner with five on his 38th three of the year. And Wilson working against Muhammad. Made him pick up the dribble. Moore comes up with a turnover. He'll pitch it ahead. Muhammad to catch. Layup is good. But then, Florida State took off on a 14-point run to blow it open. The Yellow Jackets were held scoreless for six minutes and went home with their fifth loss of the season. The Yellow Jackets got back on track in Knoxville, Tennessee with a dominant performance against the Volunteers. Here's Elder out of there with it. Center of the floor for Bynum. Back to BJ. Went into the rack with a right-hand hammer. Four to shoot. Jack for three. Got it. Rolled in from behind the arc. Tennessee is two for 12. circle. Deep three from in front. Got it. Lewis scored 24 points and B.J. Elder had 20 in the team's 77 to 62 win. You know, I definitely think, you know, one of the turning points last season was when we went, you know, up to Tennessee, um, went up there and played against a good team and just had a great team win. You know, we went up there, we all came together and you know, just pulled off a hard fought victory. Three days later, the Yellow Jackets hosted the rematch with North Carolina. The Tar Heels jumped out to a 12-6 lead, but the Jackets tied it at 15, then took the lead and command of the game. Leading the Tech charge, two on three. He'll leave it for more. Right wing looks for the tie. Got it. Three ball from Lewis. Here's Jack squaring on Felton. Kicks it back for Elder. Three ball over the top of May is good. Carolina's defense has been pretty good. Here's Jack on the drive, in traffic, pushed it up and in. He did it all on his own. Out front for Elder. Right wing, Moore shooting for three. Got it. Clarence Moore, he's got six on two triples. There's the Schentzer screen. Here's Bynum changing direction, back down the lane with a right hand, and it's good. Seven first half points for Will Bynum. A subplot developed in the second half. 
as B.J. Elder and Rashad McCants staged a scoring duel. Against Muhammad, off the May screen to the left. Tarver's got to stay with him. Three-pointer away and good. Against Williams, three-pointer away. Got it! Can't coach that, baby. 14 for Elder. Here's McCants stopping at the left, firing for three, and it's good. Here's Manuel stepping around. Down to McCants, catch and shoot two. 55-54, Elder to answer, got it! 20 for B.J. Elder. McCants took top honors with 31 points to Elder's 30, but Elder's team won the war. Back to final, out front for three, off the mark, no good. Muhammad, Tony coming off the rack, and rimmed it home with the left hand. 74-63, and I they don't have that kind of dunk in a video game. The 18 and 5 Yellow Jackets traveled to Charlottesville, Virginia on Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, the game resulted in a severe case of heartburn for Tech. Here is Schitzer inside again for the dunk. Elder for three off the right wing. Got it. Rattles in for BJ Elders. 47 three pointer of the year. Here is Bannister working against Bynum on the drive. Got caught in the air and threw it up. The Jackets nursed a seven-point lead with three minutes left in the game, but UVA would not be denied. Georgia Tech traveled to College Park, Maryland on February 18th, and the Turks got off to a fast start. Here's Gilchrist at the left, can't get by Lewis, now Garrison will fire a three, and it's good. Here's Smith, too far under the goal, nicely done though, to work back through traffic. Trailing by nine with eight and a half minutes left in the first half, the Yellow Jackets went on a 22 to nine run to take a four point lead into the locker room at halftime. In the second half, Tech's aggressive defense set the tone as Maryland made only 29% of its shots. Shot clock at 12, 11, 10 seconds now. Jarrett for three at the top, got it! Jack with 11 on his 23rd three pointer of the year. But the Terps had one last gasp and ran off eight unanswered points, cutting the Tech lead to four with less than four minutes to play. Cutting through the lane is McCray with a right-hand score. That's when Luke Schencher came up big. Working against Jones to Jack, rolling around, will go! Schencher's follow good and a foul! Schencher made the free throw, and the Yellow Jackets went on to win 75-64 to complete a season sweep of the Terrapins for the first time in 11 years. It was now late February, 25 games into the season, and the Yellow Jackets were forced to re-examine their commitment, their unity, their resolve. After losing a close game to Wake Forest, Tech folded in the waning moments of the North Carolina State game and lost by 10, at home, no less. Suddenly, the Yellow Jackets record fell to 19 and eight. They were a game below 500 in the ACC. The players held a team meeting to clear the air, but Coach Hewitt was not ready to push the panic button. After those games, uh, I remember telling people that we were playing very, very well. We just lost to two good basketball teams. Uh, we needed to clean up just a couple of things, but I thought we were playing well, but we lost to teams that played exceptionally well against us. The first step of the stretch run came on February 28th at Clemson. Marvin Lewis and B.J. Elder led the charge. Tech forcing the issue to the other end. Bounce pass, Lewis, layup good. Tony out front, away to Elder. Tech's got to find a way to get him started. There is a two, and it's good. Right side to Jarrett. Down low, here's Elder working on Robinson. Put it up off the window and in for B.J. Elder's second field goal. Ish on the drive, head fake, to scoop it up and under with a right hand and the darn thing, tear dropped in. The Yellow Jackets led this game from start to finish and increased the margin to as many as 22 points in the second half before claiming a 79-60 win. Tech opened the month of March at Duke, where the Yellow Jackets had not won since 1996. 
The Blue Devils had won 41 straight games at Cameron and set the pace early in this game. Bounce pass to Schetzer with Williams on it. Out front, Lewis setting for three. Got it, Marvin Lewis. Here's Elder slashing in, hanging two-pointer left of the lane is good for B.J. Elder. It's three on two going the other way. Here's Muhammad stopping, short jump shot, good. Here's my Muhammad. Tech matched the Blue Devils, stride for stride, before embarking on a 14-2 spurt midway through the first half. Tech's going to run the floor. Lob ahead for McHenry. Catch. Layup good. Anthony McHenry. This smile. Left wing. Here's Elder. Catch and shoot three. Got it. P.J. Elder with nine. Will. Baseline. Mohammed. A mammoth flush from underneath. The Yellow Jackets had built a 12-point lead at the six-minute mark and then hung on for a 37-29 halftime advantage. Tech picked up where it left off in the second half. Here's Reddick and Bang, now Lewis. Here's Muhammad working around Randolph. Up strong, left hand, good. Scooped up by him. Here is Muhammad for another dunk. Lob for Ish, working against Duhon. Here's Lewis, catch and shoot three away. Got it! Here's Muhammad feeding more down the lane for the dunk. Duke wasn't about to give up and battled back to tie the game at 56. But Tech answered the call. Here's Jack, working all the way down, reversed it up and got it to go. Trailing by five with less than two minutes to play, Duke was forced to challenge the Yellow Jackets to win it at the free throw line. Seven foul shots later, Tech celebrated an inspired 76 to 68 upset on Duke's home court. Going into Duke uh, and winning that game, it kind of validated everything I've been telling them the whole month of February, that they're a good team and that we can beat anybody anywhere. The Yellow Jackets completed the regular season on March 6th and paid tribute to the team's four seniors. Walk-on David Nelson, forwards Clarence Moore, and Robert Brooks, and guard Marvin Lewis. It was Lewis who led the quest to exact revenge on opponent Florida State. He pumped in a game-high 21 points to lead the Yellow Jackets to a 63-60 victory over the stubborn Seminoles. Right side, here's Jack. In the air, dumps to Lewis for three. Got it! Wow. Bulls lead is six, 31-25. Texas hoping to win here. Three by Lewis is good to start the second half. Eight for Lewis. Tech finished the regular season with a record of 22-8 tied for third place in the conference with a mark of nine and seven. The ACC tournament in Greensboro was next. The Yellow Jackets would meet North Carolina in the first round of the ACC tournament. It would be the rubber match between these two teams who split during the regular season. The Tar Heels took control in the first half, building an 11 point lead at one point. But led by center Luke Schencher, Tech came back and claimed the lead before halftime. Off a of screen, Lewis, nice feed, Schetzer layup good. Seven for Schetzer. Ismail crosses over on McCants, in the lane with a left hand and in. Left side to Lewis, Marvin, three-pointer over Williams, got it. Tech on the board from behind the arc. BJ waits on a screen, gets some help. He'll set, dump back, Schetzer layup good. Schencher continued his career game in the second half, en route to 17 points and 17 rebounds. The Yellow Jackets extended their lead to 11 on Schencher's layup at the eight minute mark, but UNC staged a rally and set up a fabulous finish. Carolina with the ball down nine. 5.35 to play, here's Felton. Into May, layup good, Sean May. Carolina front court, lead Noel, layup good, Carolina lead. Got to get it in bounds. Does go to Lewis, catches the ball with six. Five, back to Jarrett with four. He'll slide through, 17 feet away. Got it! It's good! With 1.4, in bounds, stolen, Lewis! Tech win! Jarrett, Jack, in a huge play. A huge play. And Georgia Tech has beaten North Carolina by a final of 83-82. The Jackets advance to tomorrow's first semifinal
Jack's jumper earned the Yellow Jackets a second round matchup with Duke, a team they had knocked off at Cameron in the regular season. The team slugged it out in the first half through seven lead changes. Duke attacking here to our left. Back door, low all day, wide open for the dunk. Thought about the three, he'll slash in the lane, go to the rack, lay it up and in. Got knocked to the deck as Muhammad seeps through traffic. Knocked away Lewis. Here's Ewing, foul line jumper away. Got it, Daniel Ewing. Back door, love, and Muhammad the hammer. After 20 minutes, Tech held a slim two-point lead. The second half remained nip and tuck for the first five or six minutes. But then, the Blue Devils blew it open. Right corner for Chris Duhon. Duhon on the drive, pushed it up, won't go. Williams followed good. Duke won the game 85 to 71. The Yellow Jackets returned home to await their NCAA tournament fate and learn the route they would travel to their ultimate destination, San Antonio. The road for the third seeded Yellow Jackets would begin in Milwaukee and a first round clash with Northern Iowa. The first thing that jumped in my head when I saw the selection was that we have a tough draw in the first round. Um, I got real quiet and I don't think the team understood what, what my thought process was. I just was focused on Northern Iowa and trying to get them ready as possible because I knew a little bit about them. That they, ran, they ran a lot of plays and a lot of sets and we were going to have to really be focused in order to be successful in that game. Despite the coach's concerns, Tech started strong and built a 17-point first-half lead. Northern Iowa cut it to 12 before the break and actually took the lead early in the second half. But the Yellow Jackets reclaimed a precarious edge just 20 seconds later and braced themselves for a fight to the finish. The common goal was to win the ball game. It didn't matter how many minutes you played or how many points you scored. It was just trying to get the W so we can move on to the next night. In the second round, Tech tangled with sixth seed Boston College for the right to advance to the Sweet 16. The Yellow Jackets sprinted to an early 11-point lead. Elder a three to start is good off the deep right wing. Jarrett looked into Schentzer, skips it across. McHenry will set for three. Got it. Hand to Lewis, head fake, step in two from the foul line, good. Marvin Lewis on the board. Despite BC's persistence, Tech led by four at the half. In the second half, the competition escalated into all-out war. Attacking on the dribble, up with a left hand and in for Marvin Lewis. Six for Lewis on his third field goal. Ball got knocked away, Tech out of there with it. Here's Lewis leading a four on two. Jack into traffic, live layup good by Anthony McHenry on the back end. Here's Haley at the left, out front for Dudley against Moore. Mo knocked it away. Clarence taking off down to this end, he'll dunk it down. Right wing for Watson, 2.50 to play. Dudley a three for the tie is good. Jared Dudley will trigger it inbound, looking for help, gets it to Haley with 12. Haley drives, kick back, take it away, Jared Jack with eight, seven, six, Jack dunks it home! Five and a half left to play. Georgia Tech is gone in front, 57-54. It's the beauty of playing in the ACC because you get a chance to play in games like that throughout the year. So when you get into the tournament, all of a sudden these games aren't far into you where you have to play different styles to win. You can play a high scoring game, a low scoring game, but you got to know how to pull it out on the defensive end and get those key rebounds at the end of the games and also execute well on offense. And I thought the BC game, we executed extremely well on offense late in the game and then Jared Jack made that big play to get that steal. The triumph propelled the Yellow Jackets to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1996. Next stop, St. Louis. Tech would square off against the 10th seed, Nevada, in the regional semifinals. The Wolfpack had already upset Michigan State and number two seed, Gonzaga. The Yellow Jackets were ready for their date with this would-be Cinderella team. 
But less than two minutes into the game, Tech was dealt a severe blow. Leading scorer B.J. Elder suffered a severely sprained ankle. First thing that went through my mind was, boy, that's, that's a tough break for us. But as we resumed play, I found myself just getting lost in the game and really just concentrating on focusing on the game. And, and, and honestly, I, I, in some ways, I forgot that B.J. was even on the team because I have that much confidence in guys like Will Bynum and Marvin Lewis, and they both stepped up and played great games against Nevada to lift us to the final eight. Lewis, who scored 23 points, almost single-handedly kept Tech in the game. Nevada led much of the way, but Tech hung tough. Out front, Lewis setting for three. Got it. And here's Lewis, a three right of the circle. Good. Marvin Lewis with eight. Here's Bynum out front. He'll fire for three. Got it. Bynum. The game remained close the rest of the way. The score was tied at 67 going into the final two minutes. Here's Jarrett leading the break. He'll take it down. Feed McHenry. Layup good. Lewis, left side, Bynum. He'll go baseline. Reverse it up, and the darn thing went in. What a move by Bynum. Timeout, Paul Hewitt. What a sensational move by the redshirt junior from Chicago. Bynum made the free throw to convert the three-point play. And Clarence Moore made two more foul shots to secure a 72-67 to 67 win and propel Tech into college basketball's elite eight. I had wanted the ball the whole time. I think I, think I had missed a shot earlier, and then I wanted the opportunity again. Co Coach Reese and Coach Warren were telling me, like, I'm going to give him an opportunity, I'm going to give him an opportunity. And it just so happened that I was on the end of the reversal, and Marvin had reversed the ball to me. And I just saw an opening, and I just went as hard as I could. For me to step up and be a senior and, and to score and, and play the, the way that I did, it just, you can't ask for any other situation, especially, you know, your senior year and, and to get to the finals and to have my parents travel from each, you know, town to watch us play, it just meant a lot. If the Yellow Jackets were going to make it to the Final Four, they'd have to do it without B.J. Elder. His sprained ankle had not improved enough for him to be an effective threat. Marvin Lewis stepped up to fill the void in the Nevada game. Who would answer the call now against Kansas in the championship game of the St. Louis Regional? To make the challenge even tougher, some 30,000 Jayhawk fans made the four-hour drive to St. Louis for what would become essentially a home game for Kansas. But the Yellow Jackets were focused on their goal and came ready to play. After a fierce 20 minute scuffle, the Yellow Jackets took a five point edge into the locker room at halftime. After the break, Jared Jack and Luke Schencher continued to lead the charge against the talented and tenacious Jayhawks. Trailing by seven with just under four minutes to play, Kansas made its move. Now getting the three to tie. Got it. 16 seconds left. We're locked up. Time ran out with the score tied at 66. So overtime would be required to settle the score. In the corner, here's Jarrett. Baseline, kick back. Find him a three away. Got it. Will find him. A deep three. Bynum's shot proved to be the dagger. And Jack, who scored a career-high 29 points, 
made four free throws in the final 46 seconds. Kansas didn't score a point. And for the first time since 1990, Georgia Tech had earned a trip to the mecca of college basketball, the Final Four. There were a lot of fitting moments and things that happened in that game, and probably none more fitting than Jarrett Jack scoring 29 points. Um, you know, Georgia Tech has always been known for its history of great point guards and great point guards stepping up and playing well in big games. And uh, we had a lot of guys get us to that point, but I thought it was fitting that Jarrett Jack was the one that, you know, ushered us across the, uh, the threshold into the Final Four. The Yellow Jackets received a warm welcome home after earning Tech's second trip to the Final Four. Then, just days later, Tech fans reconvened to give their team a rollicking send-off to San Antonio. In San Antonio, the team took the Alamo Dome Court on Friday for practice in front of the many fans who had followed them to the Final Four. But the Yellow Jackets also took some time off to see the sights in San Antonio and pay a visit to former NBA great David Robinson. Robinson took the players on a tour of the historic Washington Carver School and talked a little basketball too. The fans gathered in mass at San Antonio's famous Riverwalk before Saturday's national semifinal game. The band and cheerleaders arrived in style. Later that day, hundreds of tech faithfuls showed up at the team's hotel to lend their support as the Yellow Jackets moved their way to the bus for the short journey to the arena. After five and a half months of preparation, game time had finally arrived. The Yellow Jackets would meet Oklahoma State in the first semifinal at the Alamo Dome. The team had plenty of moral support in the house. Coach Hewitt had invited a generation of Yellow Jacket stars to share in the Final Four experience. They joined the rest of the crowd, wondering if B.J. Elder's ankle had responded to eight days of treatment. Marvin Lewis knew his teammate's ankle was still tender, so Lewis took the lead role. Here's Lewis, catch and shoot three, got it! Jarrett leaves for Lewis, another three off the right, got it! Boy, oh boy! <laughs> Race in front court, right corner. Lewis all alone, got it! Lewis bird five three-pointers in the first half, which in turn opened up the middle for Luke Schencher. Back to McHenry. Down low, Luke, catch, layup, good! Now for Lewis, he'll fake the three. Dump for Schencher in the dunk. Tech forged an 11-point lead and wound up leading at halftime by seven. The Cowboys' defense tightened up on Lewis in the second half, so Schencher took advantage inside. Here's Q, look away, Schencher, layup, good! <laughs> McHenry, head of the circle, down low, Schencher, catch, layup, good! Schencher finished with 19 points and 12 rebounds but the game was far from finished. After three free throws pulled Oklahoma State within three, the chaotic pace of the game resulted in two turnovers and two missed shots over the next minute 22. That paved the way for one of the most fabulous finishes in the entire tournament. Muhammad against Allen, back for Lucas, a three to tie, got it! Just like he did against St. Joe's. Timeout taken by Oklahoma State. Ten, he'll hand to Bynum with nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Bynum going to the goal, puts it up. Goal with one. Bobbick to put it in play. Lucas will heave, and it is no good. A Georgia Tech plays Monday night for the national title. As I said to Will, you know, I said, I want you to try. What I wanted him to do is to turn the corner looking for a shot. If it's there, take it. If not, find somebody. Look for a shot. Not necessarily for himself. Will went in there and manufactured a shot. And uh, nobody has more confidence. No one has more confidence than Will Bynum. And in those type of moments, confidence wins out. I think that was big because when, when my teammates stepped up, Marvin stepped up and said, 
and he thought that I should have the ball at the end. I mean, it just showed, it just showed, it went back to how everybody on the team is unselfish. I mean, everybody picked me, and I felt like I had to, I had to score. I felt like I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't disappoint the team because they felt I was the person to shoot the shot, so I just felt like I had to come through. I thought our guys played it. Unbelievable basketball for the first 35 minutes. And then Oklahoma State came back at us and made that run. But in the end, um, we just had a little too much. You know, we had a great basketball team. I, I don't think people recognize how talented this team was because it was so unselfish. Despite its illustrious 89-year history in basketball, no Georgia Tech team had ever advanced to the national championship game. And now, here were the Yellow Jackets on the floor at the Alamo Dome, poised to play Connecticut for the title. The Huskies were favored, but Tech had beaten them early in the season. The coaches and players believed, but the reality was no team in the country could have stayed with UConn on this night. The Yellow Jackets did get a strong performance from Will Bynum, who scored 17, while B.J. Elder managed 14 on a sore ankle. Ismail Muhammad tallied 10. And Luke Schencher, whose nine points and 11 rebounds may have been overshadowed by Emeka Okafor's game-leading 24 points. The Jackets did stage a late rally, fueled by a barrage of three-pointers. Front court at the left side. Will, a deep three is good. 38 seconds left. Here's Elder at the right. Deep three from there rattles in for B.J. Elder. Will come in front court, kick back for Elder, a three over Anderson is good. That pulled the Jackets within seven, with 12 ticks left on the clock. But it was too little, too late. While the Huskies celebrated their well-earned championship, the Tech players received a standing ovation from their fans. This one defeat could not diminish the team's remarkable accomplishments. It's really great to see, you know, all your hard work re rewarded in the end. And, you know, for all the 6 a.m. runs we had, you know, in, um, in the winter, and plus me playing still in April, you know, it's just a great feeling. We just had a great year, and uh, things came together for us towards the end of the season. Um, you know, at the start of the season, when we uh, uh, beat UConn up in New York, I think after that game, we, we kind of realized that uh, we could do something special this year. And, uh, you know, to get to the national championship game was just a great feeling. Just to see everyone, you know, have their moments where, you know, um, they were able to step up and do something that helped us win. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun just having everybody contribute, you know, and um, making it a real team effort. It was a crazy ride, uh, you know, from going, you know, from being uh, picked seventh in the league to, you know, making it to the, to the last game of the season. It, you know, it's been fun. You know, we've had our ups and downs and, you know, we've had games where we kind of just felt that, hey, we should have gotten those games, but they just kind of slipped away. And, you know, I just kind of, I guess, got, got us to realizing that, hey, we're going to have to play harder the next games. And, you know, we went out there and did that and, you know, look where we ended up. Being a senior just means a lot just from the standpoint of, you know, all the hard work that we've put in, you know, for the past three years or four years, the rest of the seniors and I, you know, all, all that hard work is paying off. And it got, got us to the point where, you know, we could make it to the finals and, and have an opportunity for a national championship. When they come back and they see that banner in the, uh, in the Coliseum or when they come back maybe 10, 15 years from now and people come up to them and talk about how, how good that made them feel to see Georgia Tech on the national stage uh, in a championship game going farther than any other Georgia Tech team has ever gone, um, they'll realize it. They'll realize it. I'm sure they feel good. I'm sure they're proud. But the magnitude of it won't hit them until, until they leave here and they come back one day. The Yellow Jackets returned to Atlanta the following day. They received a hero's welcome. And why not? They had become one of the most accomplished and successful teams in Georgia Tech history. In spite of one of the toughest schedules in the country, the Yellow Jackets won 28 games, tying the school record. They beat both UConn and Duke during the regular season. And they beat 15 teams that played in the NCAA tournament. I know a lot of times we take things for granted and you know, if you're always successful, you can kind of take success for granted. But the fact that we've struggled in the past, and this year we've even struggled, it just, to appreciate those moments where you, you know, you come together as a team and you enjoy each other and you can be successful, those, those moments are something I'm appreciate forever. That success was achieved 
because of the team's commitment to each other, to their family. The bond they forged will be with them always. Together, they set a new standard of excellence at Georgia Tech. They proved that it can be done. You can play for the national championship if only you believe.